roll. Mm -hmm. Call the meeting to order. Call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Trustee Dodge. Here. Trustee Gira. Here. Trustee Russo. Here. Trustee Kellandro. Here. Trustee Carroll. Mayor Pico. Here. Here. Do we have a flag? No, I don't think we have a flag, but we'll look out towards the outside. Okay. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we're here tonight for uh, the third and last uh, special town hall meeting on video gambling, on video gaming. Um, well, we have mics right here. So I, don't I don't think it's projecting out. Yeah, I don't have it up. So um, there are several people here uh, that have signed up to speak. If, if you have spoken before, we have all heard you. And some of you have spoken twice. We have heard you. Um, so saying that saying the same thing again is not going to change uh, change our position or change what we know that your position is uh, I it certainly can't stop you from speaking but in the in the interest of everyone's time um, you, your your comments are on record once and sometimes twice so uh, with that said I'll start calling people up and uh, if you don't oh excuse me we'll let you guys give your summary first yep We'll let staff give a summary first, and then we'll call people up. So, Mr. Mayor, trustees, what, what we've got up here, what I'm going to be showing, uh, is a summary of what the latest uh, draft ordinance is. Again, this is only a draft ordinance, uh, but based on comments that were made throughout the uh, last couple town hall meetings, uh, we wanted to put those in, and uh, so there are some items that maybe we still up for discussion, but just want to give you a quick overview. So just a real quick summary of the highlights and what's required and not allowed. Uh, there will be no more than five video gaming terminals for any one establishment. Only Class A establishments with full service restaurants will be um, able to obtain a gaming license. A business must be um, um, in business for at least 18 consecutive months. They have to be a license. Have to be licensed by the state. There are probationary periods for uh, transfer of sales of businesses. Now, this is not transferring of a liquor or gaming license, but just a transfer of a business. Uh, physical barriers for gaming areas inside the establishments. Uh, it will require cons constant video surveillance, a decal that is going to, that would be provided by the village would need to be posted on the door or window indicating that video game is in there to uh, warn those that may not want to uh, walk into a restaurant that has gaming. Uh, initially, there, it will be capped at uh, 25 gaming licenses. And then any additional license would be decided on a case-by-case. -case. Uh, criminal background checks would be um, completed, and they must comply with the village sign ordinance. Uh, not allowed, uh, will not allow gaming cafes, will not allow gaming in drug stores, convenience stores, liquor stores. Uh, there will be no digital signage. There will be no off-premises premises signs. Uh, no noise and lights from the gaming machines, and the gaming license is not transferable. <coughs> this is a little bit more in detail, the sections, uh, and by the way, the uh, latest draft ordinance is on our website for anyone to view, and this presentation uh, will also be on the website tomorrow, and these again are, are really the highlight uh, highlights of this ordinance. Again, uh, where uh, video gaming terminals may be located, uh, maintained and otherwise operated on premises within the village establishments licensed by the Illinois 
gaming board at uh, Village. Um, there is corrective action. Uh, we are limiting, as I mentioned before, to establishments with Class A liquor license holders. For those that might not know what a Class A liquor license is, that is any, any uh, restaurant that is a full service restaurant that has kitchens and uh, full food menus. Uh, again, waiting periods for the new businesses. It's uh, 90 days following enactment. Uh, the number of available video game terminal licenses uh, would be kept at 25, and then um, and then the following would be uh, a case by case, as mentioned before. Uh, the waiting period for a business or sale or a transfer. At this point, we have a video gaming establishment is sold or transferred. A new owner, owner is issued a Class A Village Liquor license for that establishment. The new owner will be eligible to apply for an available, um, available gaming license and have a six-month probationary video gaming terminal license. While their application for the regular video gaming terminal license is processed. Again, we are limiting the signage. We are requiring that we have physical barriers for gaming areas inside the establishments. And same thing with the noise and lighting. Uh, in addition to the video, uh, we are requiring alarms of those areas. And that's, those are the highlights. Chief, do you have anything to add? Not at this point, sir. Okay. And for those of you who don't know, the Chief has spoken two other times, so it's on record uh, what, uh, what he has found out from neighboring communities. So as a reminder, if you've spoken before, we've heard you. Also, uh, the, another thing is the referendum issue has been decided. So we're not, we're not discussing that tonight. That has already been decided and is on the ballot for March. So uh, anything you say on that is not going to change the fact that it's been decided. Uh, so with that said, uh, I will start calling people up. And you have three minutes. And uh, uh, so we'll start with uh, Jackie Defini. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jackie DeFini, a 40-year resident of Orland Park. Uh, we raised our children in Orland Park, a family community. I would like to see that stay that way. This gentleman addressed most of my concerns. My chief concern was the standalone Stella's, <coughs> Daddy's, Tracy's, Elsie's. So most of my concerns were addressed by the uh, gentleman. Uh, proliferation of these venues, that was my prime concern. And if I might add, for uh, Chief McCarthy's benefit, I was away from my residence recently for three weeks, and I was informed that there was a vacation policy where you could check in with the police, and my neighbors told me the police were there all the time <laughs> in the morning. My one neighbor is here, and she was laughing. She said they were parked in front of your house. So it was a very, very good program. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Patrick Clifton. Good evening. Uh, my name is Patrick Clifton. I'm a resident of Worland Park for a little over 10 years. Uh, I really want to come and speak for a couple of reasons. I appreciate you guys uh, taking my time. Uh, I was one of the individuals I read uh, the article after the last meeting. Uh, that truly felt like I was duped in regards to the petition that was going around. Um, I was getting pictures with my son at, at an OIA event and caught in a, a wild way. And uh, shame on me, didn't really have time to put it all together, uh, but, but, but claimed that I was a true supporter. He got caught off guard and was told that was why I needed to sign the petition and that's why I did so. Uh, I will follow that up by letting everybody know I am not a gamer. But uh, what I am is uh, I work in the consumer product industry. And I work heavily in the on-premise environment uh, in the northern half of the state of Illinois. And I've seen what's happened with the gaming coming in. And it is an extremely challenging environment for the independent business owner these days, especially in the bar and restaurant industry. And uh, where this has been approved and been put in place, I have seen a flourish of positive news within this environment. I've seen dollars put back in the business. 
now seeing those businesses put dollars back into the community. So I really just wanted to come and state that I am an independent business owner supporter. Uh, I'm a supporter of Royal Park, the community, uh, and I'm a full supporter of implementation of uh, the game. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, Jim Harmoning. The interest of getting to see Alabama kick toward his butt tonight, I'll be brief. Uh, first of all, uh, the, uh, the referendum, having two referendum issues, is, is going to be very confusing. We have the people's referendum that was signed by 2,200 people. It makes me sad that there's a second referendum. It's going to be tough educating the public. It's going to be really tough. I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm disappointed. I, I'm, I'm sorry to say, and I seldom say that about my uh, my board. The referendum and the, uh, as Joe uh, earlier pointed out, all the details. I, I really call on you trustees to look at the, the, the fine points. If you're going to pass this and you're going to make this extremely difficult for people to get a license, limiting the number of them, I, I think we're going to have a lot of lawsuits. I think that $400,000 is going to be spent on defending all the things we're limiting. The other thing you want to look at is who's the best person to implement each piece of the ordinance? Who's, who's really, who should the police chief tell? Or should the chief, police chief be the person who decides if somebody's in violation? So the devil's in the details. So please, if you're going to pass this, look at the details and decide which staff member or the trustees as a whole. If, if the police chief is going to inform somebody, should they inform the whole board, not just inform the mayor? If somebody's in violation, who gets to decide that they're in violation? Law enforcement or the mayor? So look at, look at the details of the ordinance. Of the, uh, th those things bothered me in a sense of who has the ability to make those decisions and choices. So I would appreciate people voting for yes, prohibit video gaming, and no to licensing video gaming. Maybe that'll be our slogan. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Tim McCarthy, not not Chief Tim McCarthy, the other one. Uh, sure. Uh, Don Duffy. Thanks for taking uh, time. Um, full disclosure, uh, I do not support uh, gambling in Orland Park. However, as a 20-year resident uh, of Orland Park, what really disappoints me more uh, is how the process has played out. I've watched over the years and I've dealt with other towns that have aired their political disputes uh, in the public and in the press, often getting personal. I was proud that Orland Park was above all that, until now. This is obviously a hot button topic, so why not let the residents of Orland Park weigh in on the matter in something other than a town hall meeting? What would have been the downside to an advisory referendum? I think we would all agree this is not a trivial matter. Cook County will have an advisory referendum in the spring asking voters if recreational marijuana use should be made legal for adults in Illinois. So a group of residents decided they wanted to be heard, both for and against, and exercised their right to make sure a referendum was placed on the ballot. <coughs> well, apparently that got the board's attention. And miraculously, another referendum question on the issue will be added to the ballot. And that was added very quickly after sitting on the issue for two months. Why didn't you do that in the first place? Now we have competing questions that require different responses to say the same thing. Is that a coincidence? 
And while the original question was criticized for saying something that was already in place, I don't see the harm in confirming what's already been happening. Now, whether it's true or not, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to research it, but I'm also, I've been told that the signage restrictions are already in place. I was also very interested in how the vote played out on the second referendum question. The mayor was quoted as saying he does not believe in referendums for such issues, yet he voted to support the reported question. I did not vote for my elected officials to make tough decisions for me. I voted for my elected officials to make tough decisions with me. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Dean, Dean Coldenhoven. My name is Dean Coldenhoven, and I thank you for the privilege of speaking tonight. Some people play the slots and video gaming and have fun doing so, but there is also a very serious side to this type of entertainment, and it cannot be ignored. Many people's lives and their families and lives are ruined by their addiction to gambling. It should be asked to the village officials as well as the residents of the village of Orland Park, do you really want this type of gaming? I believe the answer should be a resounding no, and here is why. <clears throat> A baby of an addicted mother was killed for insurance money. This is from an article published in the Chicago Tribune. Further confirmation of the negative impacts of gambling to society is illustrated in a case against an Illinois mother who has been accused of killing her seven-week-old baby allegedly to collect insurance money for her gambling habit. Testimony by federal prosecutors attempted to show that this woman, I won't use her name, of Hickory Hills, Illinois, because of an insatiable addiction to gambling, suffocated her infant daughter for $200,000 in insurance money. She tried to make it appear like a crib death. Her court-appointed attorneys argued that the casino operators encouraged her addiction. The defense claimed this woman had VIP type cards that tracked her gambling activities and that the casinos failed to suggest help for the troubled gambler. She allegedly spent as much as $650 in nine minutes on slot machines after boarding a Joliet Riverboat casino. She also stole $2,500 from her mother's restaurant. There are 17 indictments against this woman who claims that her daughter died from sudden infant death syndrome. <clears throat> this, this, just 15 months after her other daughter died under the same circumstances. She was convicted and received a sentence of 21 years in prison. So I strongly object to having gaming in Orland Park. I'm from Palos Heights and we are a neighbor of yours. We don't have it and it's sure nice that you don't have it now and I'd like to keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Kathy Gilroy. Good evening. Four days after the last town hall meeting, the Daily Herald did a front page story on suburban bank robberies. The FBI agent who was interviewed for the story blamed the robberies of 16 suburban banks on, quote, drugs, alcohol, and gambling, unquote. Of the suburbs that suffered the bank robberies in the story, 11 allow legal slot machines in their towns. And interesting enough, two of those towns that have suffered bank robberies have had second thoughts on the proliferation of gambling parlors and now have moratoriums on more profiteering from armless <coughs> bandits in their towns. A so-called trial period wouldn't work. Route outfits would cry about their hundreds of thousands of dollars of costs in obtaining and setting up slot machines. Elsewhere, existing slot machines have been grandfathered in after trial periods. The result is the same as a moratorium, which more effectively can be done at any time and not be limited to the specified length of a sunset clause. There are claims that revenue from local gamblers' losses would stay in Orland Park. However, 25% would go to the state, and 35% would go to the route outfit. If the outfit were from another town, as fair share gaming is, 60% of gamblers' losses would leave Orland Park. 
Orland Park would receive only 5% of local gamblers' losses. To generate $400,000 per year in taxes for Orland Park, local gamblers would need to lose $8 million per year. That $8 million per year in gamblers' losses would be $8 million of lost sales to other businesses, many in Orland Park. The argument that all Orland Park gamblers will gamble somewhere else One minute. is phony. Some will, but the convenience of gambling increases the number of gamblers, the frequency of gambling, and the amount of money lost. Finally, restricting armless uh, bandits to locations with full kitchens will not keep out many casinos. They'll simply add full kitchens to their parlors. It would be just another cost of doing business for them. Their actions elsewhere have demonstrated that gambling is so profitable that they would overcome any barrier to entry that you put up. Beware what you are pressured into because you hear only rosy predictions from those who would profit and not the negative effects that Orland Park could experience years from now. Thank you for your comments. Tim McCarthy. Mayor, I'm not going to bore you with the same information I provided earlier. Uh, we are ready and prepared to deal with the referendum. My name is Tim McCarthy. I own Patty B. Pub Restaurant. I'm 100 feet from Homer Glen, and I compete with other small businesses. It's so important that people understand this is not about gaming. This is about the life and existence of small businesses in this community. We need to be able to compete, period. Secondly, I want to answer a question about who's going to enforce. Tuesday morning, the 2nd of January, 8 a.m., three inspectors were at my door at my restaurant checking my 2018 business license. That's pretty darn efficient, isn't it? 8 o'clock on Tuesday morning, January 2nd. I'm not worried about who's going to enforce it, believe me, not this time. <laughs> the reason for the referendum, quite simply, was the petitions were so misleading, half the people who signed them were for video gaming. So that's why we have a new referendum. And uh, tragedies involving vices occur all over the state. There's no way to stop it. And is there some crazy people? Yes, there is. We will do our best to control that. Finally, I put myself off to the end here. I didn't have any idea we'd be honored by Mrs. Gilroy coming into our community again after winning $25,000 at a Dolly's gaming car. For free? Yeah. For free. For free. Are you okay? I put my name in the hat. <laughs> Well, never mind. The reality of it is, this is all part. Not all the part makes our decision. We're ready to go to referendum. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll move on to board comments. Pat, would you like to start? If you have any. Yeah. Is this that? Yeah, turn it on. <coughs> on the bottom, I think. Oh, there. I can talk loud enough. Here you go. It's on. Stand up and shout. Okay, I only have a couple of comments. Um, first of all, you know, it's unfortunate that we have gaming in the state of Illinois, but that's the state problem. Um, whether or not Oregon Park approves gaming is not going to impact someone who has an issue, keep them from going, you know, two miles west or north or, or wherever. It's unfortunate. It should have been stopped at the state. Um, also, someone mentioned the revenue. We would get 5% of the revenue. Uh, the state gets 35, the gaming companies get 35. The businesses get 25 and we get five. So again, that goes to the state of Illinois. That's how the statute, well, you can correct me later. Okay, I'm sure you will. Um, 
I, I think the only thing this does, if it's approved with the consent of our referendum of our, our residents, is that it allows our residents who choose to game and gamble to stay closer to home. I don't think it'll increase it. I think it just will divide it up. And as I spoke with one of the businesses once, they said they believe too that eventually it'll all even out and it won't be a big thing where Payless might lose some or Hickory Hill, whoever. Um, I've not done this. I went to one of these establishments in Homer Glen a week or two ago and they, I, I thought it was horrible. Uh, it was the way it was done. I, I'm, continuing my research and see how it is. Um, the ordinance that we have in hand, I have a number of questions. I think are we gonna deal with that later? Yeah. What's well, here, there's some issues that I think still need to be changed. It, it is unfortunate that there's two referendums on the ballot. One of them could still be removed and then that would eliminate the um, confusion. I think the one the village put up, we were not in a hurry to do it. And one gentleman thought we rushed to do that. We were kind of forced into rushing to do that. Um, it's unfortunate. Everybody supports the idea of the referendum. It's just how we get there. I just have a couple of comments, and I would reiterate what uh, Trustee Gira said. Um, those of us who voted in favor of the second referendum, by no means was it an attempt to confuse the voters. I think it was the opposite. <laughs> Um, but having said that, I think we have a pretty um, smart electorate. I don't, I don't think, I think anybody who can read is going to be able to, to make sense of those two questions. Um, and I think we'll get a good idea of how our residents feel on it. Thank you. I just want to thank everyone for coming. I'm on record multiple times. So I just want to thank everyone for coming. It's about the same people. But thank you very much. The key thing is we're keeping uh, people informed and getting their opinions. So I appreciate that. Just uh, briefly, Joe, I guh uh, no, oh, excuse me, Mayor Pico, how do you want to handle discussion on any of the issues? Just start it now or? On what issues? For any of the issues that are brought up in there. The, the, the ordinance we're not discussing. All right, got it. So, so on the agenda. Yeah, so one of the things um, I wouldn't mind if uh, staff also adds to the research is we're home rule. And if this starts getting out of control, which I don't think it will because of the ordinance, we can just get rid of this ordinance. I just have a few comments. Uh, so for those who uh, showed up tonight for the first time and hadn't been here for other discussions or for the referendum discussion the other night, um, uh, so I'm very clear to you that while this board did not sit on this issue, um, the issue was brought forth by someone not, from, not on the board, was put on the agenda, which is why we were forced to deal with it way before our research was done, way before anyone was ready to have these discussions, so it pushed this way forward. Um, secondly, uh, these special meetings were called because of that to have to get information from the public and to get their perspective perspectives. Uh, for anyone who wants to understand my positions on referendums, I suggest going to the uh, going to the village website and going and listening to the whole audio as opposed to a one sentence quote because I spoke for quite a bit on the referendum and what my rationale was for the vote. Uh, additionally, um, just to let everyone know here. I have spoken to a lot of mayors. Uh, in, in fact, just a, an hour and a half ago, spoke to a, to a mayor. And uh, so we are getting feedback for, from other towns as well um, that do have gaming. And my position hasn't really changed on this from since, uh, since the election, which was when asked, I said the same thing which I say, say now, which is generally speaking, I'm not philosophically opposed to gaming. Um, I think the state of Illinois did all of us a disservice by approving it, but unfortunately it's here. Um, so philosophically, I'm not opposed to it, and I would, and I'm going to be supportive of it only if it's extremely restrictive. Which my understanding from our ordinance, and I know there's concerns about whether or not we will be sued. We have actually done a lot of research on every single one of these items to ensure that they will hold up in court, that they have been tested, and I believe we have the most restrictive ordinance in the state of Illinois on each of these issues because we've looked at each of these issues. So that's the goal of this board. Uh, and we'll hear what the people say during, uh, for the referendum. With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion adjourned. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Thank you very much for coming. Yeah. 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 Ye